Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about importing 3D in Godot 3. Now if you've used the game engine or 3D in the past, you'll know that FBX is one of the standard file formats for 3D. But Godot does not use this file format. The FBX file format is owned and licensed by Autodesk, and it has a closed library. So for right now, Godot does not use it. But that's okay. There's three file formats that you can import. DAE, also known as Collada, GLTF, and OBJ. DAE is pretty much like FBX, but it's open source, and it's the file format you most likely want to use. GLTF is relatively new, so if you use it, you should expect that you might run into some issues. In OBJ, while you can use it, it's a little older, and it doesn't support the same features that DAE or GLTF does. Now, to import these file types, you can drag and drop them straight into the engine, or you can open up where you saved your project initially, and you can copy and paste or drag and drop the files straight into there. And when you come back to the engine, they'll be loaded in. When you bring a DAE or a GLTF file into Godot, by default, they'll be converted into scenes. And when you bring an OBJ into Godot, by default, it'll be looked at as a mesh. Now you'll also notice that I imported a material. Sometimes OBJs will be accompanied by an MTL file. This is a material library. With the DAE and GLTF, if there was a material exported with them, they'll be built into the file. Next, if you double click on the DAE or the GLTF as a scene, it'll give you two options to open it. It'll ask if you want to make a new inherited scene or if you just want to open it. Chances are you don't want to make a new inherited scene. So you can click on open. Now the benefit of DAE and GLTF is that it can store more than just mesh data. You can have skeletal and skin data, you can have cameras and you can have lighting, but the OBJ file format usually only holds mesh data and it needs another file if you want to bring a material in with it. Next, I want to show you the import settings and the import file. So if you open up where you saved your project, you'll notice now you have an import file type for each of the files that you brought in. Whenever you import a file into Godot, these will be generated by default. They'll store your import settings. So to change our import settings, we just need to come back to Godot and you go to import. Whenever you select a file that's been imported, you'll see a list of options. And these options really depend on the file type. In this situation, DAE and GLTF will be pretty much the same, but OBJ is different. So the first option we have is import as. And on OBJ, we have an option to change it from OBJ as mesh to OBJ as scene. Now, even though we just changed that to scene and we got a bunch of options to show up, if you look down at the file system, you'll notice that the icon didn't change. So whenever you make a change in your import settings, you're going to want to re-import it. Specifically, if you change the import type, it'll ask you to save the scene, re-import, and restart the engine. Now the rest of these settings, a lot of these have to do with other topics that will be covered in other videos, but I'll just give you an overview of them right now. So under nodes, you can change your root type, your root name, you can change that. Maybe you don't want scene root as your root name. And your root scale, you can change it, but hopefully you don't have to. Hopefully when the model was exported, it was exported correctly. Custom script, you can create your own import process. And then storage, you have two options. You have single scene and instance subscene. If you change this to instance subscene, instead of your scene being one full scene, anything that's under the group will be broken out in your resources folder. Under materials and location, we can choose whether the material is stored in a mesh or if it's stored within the node. And then storage, we can choose whether the resource is built into the file or if it's broken out into other files. And then keep on re-import. If we make changes to our material, this ensures that when we re-import, it won't override our changes. All right, guys, we'll cover more of these settings in later videos, but this should cover importing 3D. If you guys liked this video and you thought it was useful, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.